Okay, so we actually just want to set up some new infrastructure. I'm going to give you the absolute minimum amount of Terraform theory so that you can actually go do that. I'm going to try to fit that into about two minutes. First, providers are what give you access to the actual resources that we're managing. So if you want to set up some web servers and a load balancer, you're talking about setting up basically three virtual machines. The virtual machines are the resources, and the provider would be like the digital ocean plugin. That would be like the Terraform bit that exposes those resources to us. There's all kinds of providers. Feel free to check those out and read up a little bit on them. It's not just like cloud providers like you would expect, like AWS, DigitalOcean, Google Cloud, Triton, all kinds of stuff. But also services can be a provider. Like there's an Itzinga provider here for monitoring. There's like a Kubernetes provider, uh, Nomad for scheduling Docker containers. Mailgun has a provider. So all kinds of, well, providers can expose functionality of their cloud, their software, whatever here in this sort of Terraform provider format. And then you can just go use that as a Terraform resource. The one that we're interested in is the DigitalOcean provider. You can see the docs page here. All these docs are linked in the description of this video. But you can see some examples, the arguments that it requires, that kind of thing. So what resources does this provider expose to us? Well, you can see it here on the left. The resources are things like an SSL cert, a domain, a droplet, which is just another name for a virtual machine, firewall rules, uh, floating IPs, load balancer, DNS records, SSH keys. These are specific to this provider. So DigitalOcean exposes these resources. Specifically, we care about two of these DO resources. The first is the droplet, which is just the base like VM that we're going to be configuring. So these will be our web servers. And then the other thing we're interested in is the load balancer, because this is going to balance between our two web servers for this project. We'll get into this in just a second. Just a final note, as we jump into this project, um, you can just clone essentially a finished version from my GitHub account. I don't really recommend that you do that, um, except as sort of a reference, because I'm going to show you how we get to this point, not necessarily how to start with a finished project. It's just not realistic and it's a little too complicated. So we're going to start simple, we're going to kind of build up, and we're going to end up with something like this. And if you get stuck, you can use this as a reference to be like, okay, where's the bug? It's here as a resource, but I really recommend you doing this from scratch. It's the only real way to learn. Okay, so I'm going to create a project directory. I'm going to say make dear DOTF project. That's going to create our directory for us. We're going to go in there and we're going to create two files. The first file, we're going to just paste this in here and we're going to call it provider.tf. And all this is doing is saying we're going to use the DigitalOcean provider. So this is like the plugin we're using for Terraform. And that thing requires a, an access token, which you might recall we just created. And it's going to also take all these variables, but we'll pass those in later. Those are just not set for now. Okay, that's really all you need to understand about this. You can pretty much ignore this. This just says we're using DigitalOcean. And now we're going to create the first beautiful little butterfly, our first web server. We're going to call it web one tf the tf is just for terraform to let it know to like parse this file and do stuff with it okay so we've got these two files saved now our provider.tf and our web1.tf the provider just says use digitalocean the web1 tf actually defines our first resource which is a digitalocean droplet uh, you can think of this basically as a function call right in the script that you're writing or something like that this is like the function name this is like the type of thing we're creating and the name of it. We pass it things like the image slug that we want to use. In this case, it's Ubuntu 1604. Uh, the name that it's going to have. So this is the actual name in DigitalOcean. This is the name in Terraform. The region we want to spin this droplet up in. The size that it needs to be. We're turning on private networking. We are passing it an SSH key that we want to authorize on all those droplets. So as soon as they spin up, they'll allow a key that has this fingerprint. As you can guess, this is the key that we uh, uploaded earlier. Now connection. When I do stuff to this droplet, once it's up and running, this virtual machine, I'm going to connect as root using the SSH connection type, using a private key that I'm going to pass in as a variable. Again, don't, don't get too hung up on this for now. You'll see how all this hangs together. 
Now we get to the, the last Terraform concept you need to understand before we kind of get going, and that's the provisioner. So provisioner is something that runs after a resource has actually been created. So once this thing exists, we're going to connect to it using however we define the connection, and then we're going to provision it using one or more provisioners. In this case, we're using the remote exec or remote execution provisioner, which just goes and basically logs in, and then this inline thing here just means run these commands one at a time. This is an array for those of you who are used to scripting. Um, this is just an array or a list and it's just comma separated string values basically that you're going to run. What Terraform is going to do is create this instance, connect to it once it's up, and then run this provisioner stuff, which is really just installing Nginx. So it's going to do a sudo apt-get up update and then an install Nginx. Okay, so let's actually create this thing. There's really only two things we gotta do. Remember that token we created? I'm just gonna define a shell variable here, do underscore token equals, and then the token that you created. This is the personal access token, the first thing you created and copied. I'm gonna hit enter. For now, this is just gonna work in the shell that you define these in. The second value is SSH underscore fingerprint, and we're gonna assign that the SSH fingerprint of the key which you whitelisted in uh, DigitalOcean. That's the, that was the second step under your security uh, settings. Okay, so now both of those are defined. You can check that by just echoing them out with something like echo dollar sign and then the variable name. And you can see we've got the stuff we need in here. It's really just the provider file and the web server definition. Now to make sure that Terraform can run, you just say Terraform init and by default just do this from the uh, from the directory that your project is in. And what it's gonna do is go and download the plugins that it sees that you need. So we defined the DigitalOcean provider. Well, you can see it just went and downloaded the DigitalOcean provider plugin. So now we've got what we actually need to run Terraform. And this is the command we're gonna run. I'm gonna just walk you through this real quick. Terraform plan. So this is gonna create a plan I'll explain what that means in a second. And we're passing in those variables that you saw in our provider TF requires, right? Those aren't defined in provider.tf. You can see they're empty here, so we sort of expect to have them later. They have to get passed in at some point, and we're passing them in just as we run this. The DigitalOcean token is that um, variable we defined just now. Our public and private key are the unencrypted key we created. And then the SSH fingerprint we're passing in is the SSH fingerprint variable we just def uh, defined above. So the way that it works is Terraform, you ask it to make a plan based on the files that we've created in your project. So when I hit enter, the first thing it does is check, does it know about any state that it's managing? Like, am I already managing a bunch of infrastructure here in this project? No, it doesn't find anything. So it says, okay, cool, this is like brand new. So I'm gonna just create stuff. You've got a little key here in case. Um, it'll do things like create, modify, or delete, basically. Modify will be yellow, delete will be red. So it's saying, all right, I'm gonna create a DigitalOcean droplet. We'll name it web1. And then here are the arguments I'm gonna pass in. And DigitalOcean will do whatever it does with this. So this goes into the DigitalOcean provider plugin which actually hits the DigitalOcean API to create a droplet with these settings. Now, computed really just means that stuff will like happen dynamically. So like we don't know what IPv4 address this thing's gonna have. Like that depends on what DO allocates to this VM. But the settings that we know about, you can see here. It says plan one to add, zero to change, zero to destroy. So we haven't actually done anything yet, but we know what it's going to do. If I go back to my dashboard, you can see like nothing's actually been created yet. These are all previous projects or other learning stuff that I'm doing. If we now apply this, this will actually go and create some infrastructure. So it's gonna double check to make sure you're sure and type in yes and hit enter and it will go create the instance that we've defined. Okay, congratulations, you know how to use Terraform. All done. No, so this is the very beginning. You have just provisioned your first instance and you can see it's still creating. It's gonna take some time. You can see that if you refresh your dashboard, that instance was just provisioned. It actually does have an IP address now. And it's just waiting for the instance to 
boot, for that droplet to boot. And as soon as it can connect, you'll see it will log in with that connection string, uh, sorry, that connection configuration that you saw. And now it's running those commands one by one in the provisioner, right? So this is apt-get update, clearly. And then it's going to do an install nginx. And there we go. We now have an instance with nginx installed. You can verify that this like actually worked, right? So if I just go to this IP, nginx is definitely listening on port 80 and giving me the welcome page. Lovely. So that is the Terraform kind of workflow. You change some files, you do a plan to verify that like what you actually think is being changed is being changed, and then you do an apply to actually apply those changes. If I do another plan, I haven't changed anything, so it's checking on state again. It says, oh, I already know about the thing you're defining and I just provisioned that. Then it actually reaches out to DigitalOcean against the API, looks at the state and says, oh yeah, no, 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 nothing's changed there either. So like, for example, if you accidentally deleted that droplet or something, it would be like, oh, whoa, that actually doesn't exist anymore. We need to recreate that droplet. But in this case, it just says no changes, infrastructure up to date, and we're good to go. Let's, uh, let's make some more infrastructure, because once you start, it's pretty, pretty hard to stop. If I want to create a second web server, I can just run this fancy little sed command and substitute web1 for web2 greedily in the web1.tf file and then output that to web2.tf which is really just a fancy way of copying the file while also replacing some stuff in it. So you can see now I have a web2.tf and all the occurrences of web1 have just been changed to web2. Okay so now I would have two web servers and what do you think is going to happen now when I do another plan? Well let's see. There it is it's going to add one droplet. It already knows about the other one, so there's only one thing to add, nothing to change, nothing to destroy. But I'm not going to let you get away that easily. We're actually going to modify these slightly, and I'll walk you through uh, a few changes. In the next video, we're going to set up a second web server and a load balancer and talk about template files.